Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've probably seen a content creator or two advertising VPN services. And while they might not actually be as necessary as those ads would have you believe, there is still a place for them. The problem is that centralized services are actually not really much more secure than just using your ISP. And so Orchid aims to fix this by taking a decentralized approach to VPNs. So stick around and let's talk about it. Hey guys, I'm Sprague, and I'll be the first to say the VPNs for the majority of people are pointless. If you're not using public Wi-Fi's or doing anything against your ISP's terms of services, you don't need a VPN. And I know that you might have a VPN so that your ISP can't see what you're doing, and your ISP can't, but now a VPN provider can. And due to digital fingerprinting, the websites you're using can still figure out who you are anyway, even using a VPN, and continue to sell your data like they were already doing. For example, if you use Chrome and you're logged into your Google account through Chrome, then there is no point using a VPN because every website you visit will still be logged by your browser. However, that's not to say that there isn't legitimate use cases for VPNs. As I mentioned, if you frequent public Wi-Fi's, you probably should use a VPN to protect yourself against man in the middle attacks. The big problem I have with VPN providers is their no logs claim, which just doesn't hold up under any sort of scrutiny. Firstly, there's no actual way to prove whether or not this is true because you don't have access to that VPN providers inner workings. And secondly, even if they're not logging a certain type of traffic, that doesn't mean they're not logging all types of traffic. For example, they might not be logging the actual requests that are being made but they might still be logging the actual connections being made to their servers. And finally, even if the VPN provider is being absolutely honest and they are not logging a single piece of information about you, the user, the VPN provider still has their own ISP and their ISP definitely will be logging. Basically, as much as centralized VPN services try, they will never be able to offer the level of anonymity and protection that they offer. And this is where ORCID comes in. More than 60% of the world's population is now online. And a byproduct of this is that companies are trying harder and harder to figure out who you are, what you like, what you dislike, and how they can best sell their product to you. This issue, however, is exclusive to Web 2.0. With Web 3.0, the new take on the internet is to make it open and give the power back to the user. So it makes sense to use Web 3.0 to try and fix some of these problems within the old internet. Orchid aims to incentivize providers to provide their VPNs to the user. This means that the user will not only be able to route just through a single VPN, but actually stack them up in layers, giving them a much greater deal of security and anonymity. This means that you can be sure that the provider isn't selling your data because no one entity will have access to every server that your request goes through. On top of this, every node only knows about the traffic from the previous server, and because the previous server might be owned by a different person, there's no way to figure out who the originating sender actually is. This is far more secure than any centralized provider, and this is particularly important for anything where anonymity could have dire consequences if broken. For example, anyone who's whistleblowing. Now, anyone who's used Tor or is familiar with onion routing will already have a very good idea of how Orchid works. Onion routing is like ogres. It has layers, layers of encryption. Onions have layers. Let's take an outbound request as an example. This request would be wrapped in layers and layers of rerouting and then sent to the first node. This node would then unwrap a layer and figure out where the request is going to next. This action repeats with each node unwrapping the next layer and forwarding the message on to the next place until the final request is actually executed. This means that every node only knows where the message came from, but not whether or not that was the actual originator or not and where the message is going to. When a request is made, the originator chooses a random selection of nodes from a directory node and orders these into a chain, which is the order of nodes that the message will pass through. As you can see, this sort of system is perfect for the cryptocurrency space, where a blockchain's strength comes from having a high number of nodes. And in an onion-rooted VPN provider, again, the security comes from having a high number of nodes. To participate in the network as a bandwidth provider, a provider needs to stake OXT. The amount of tokens staked directly impacts how likely they will be to be chosen as a node in a chain. This staking requirement effectively guards the network against what's known as a Sybil attack, 
where a single entity will run enough nodes that they could potentially make up the majority of a chain and figure out who the originator is. Because of the staking requirement, instead, if an entity was to try and perform a civil attack, they would be spreading their stake across a large number of nodes, and in doing so would cut down the chances of any particular node being chosen to be part of a chain. When it comes to payments, Orchid also takes a very different approach to any centralized offering, making it more like a bandwidth marketplace, where the users just pay for the bandwidth they use and not a monthly payment. This means that users who are, for example, just using a public network once a month aren't paying for the entire month, they're just paying for the time that they spent using the network. On top of this, because all the payments are made in OXT, it gains the benefit of the pseudo-anonymous nature of Ethereum, the blockchain that Orchid is built on. There's also plans in the future to provide an onion routing style payment system, making things even more anonymous on the payment side of things. One big advantage of Orchid, and in fact any decentralized VPN provider, is that bandwidth providers can be anyone, not only individuals running nodes themselves, but also existing VPN companies offering up their servers to be part of the network, effectively meaning that this will not put anyone out of business, as existing VPN providers can now just become part of a new network. This would obviously also help to increase the security of the network, because if there's lots of these big players with lots of servers, it brings awareness to the space, and then because individuals can also earn money from running these nodes, it means there would be a healthy mix of individual run and entity run nodes in the same pool. This would effectively reduce the chances of any particular entity having too many nodes in any given chain. But the OXT token is how the entire thing hangs together. As mentioned before, Orchid is built on Ethereum, which means OXT is an ERC20 token, with its primary purpose being to buy and sell bandwidth. This makes an almost perfect supply and demand system, where the value of the token is directly baked into the network itself. In terms of supply, there was 1 billion tokens minted at launch, and this will not be increased. The only change to this number will be tokens burnt over the years. Unfortunately, there's very little public information known about the initial token distribution of OXT, which means it's unknown how many of the tokens are held by VC firms or early backers. There are, however, some concerns that I have for Orchid, and the first one is that it's built on top of Ethereum. Ethereum can only process somewhere between 12 and 17 transactions per second. This means that not even 20% of the current VPN market could fit on the network before it would bring Ethereum to its knees. There are two real solutions for this, the first one being slightly more short-sighted than the other. Firstly, they could move to a chain such as HBAR or SOL, which would allow them to take advantage of the much higher transactions per second. But realistically, if all of the world's global VPN market was to move on to ORCID or other decentralized VPN platforms, it would still be too much for these chains to handle. So the better long-term solution, as is most things in crypto these days, is layer two, which Orchid is actually working on ready for the rollout of ETH 2.0. My second concern, however, is a little bit more pressing because in researching for this video, I thought, why don't I offer up my two servers as bandwidth providers to the network and earn some passive income? But in doing so, I found out that actually, despite all of the marketing materials saying that any individual can become a bandwidth provider, that's not true. This is a feature that has been in the works since Orchid was first launched, but is still not here yet. And therefore, that means that currently anyone using the VPN platform is purely using providers that Orchid have hand-selected and trust. This to me is a pretty major red flag, because this isn't really any different to centralized services for the current time being, because these are the same VPN providers that you could just buy VPNs through anyway. However, as a VPN user, Orchid does actually aim to solve a lot of the issues that I have with the current VPN providers. And on top of this, the way that they've made their app so easy to use makes this a definite one to watch in my opinion. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a like and a comment down below. And if you do generally just enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. Thanks, bye.